people are always analyzing you because of your work, Noel. And uh, I, I've been yeah, reading about you a lot. Do you hate that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. Are they, they, are they free to analyze. I don't like to analyze myself. You'd rather, you don't like to analyze yourself. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you when other people do when they say in this part of the movie we can see Polanski's childhood? Oh, that's wonderful. Where, Let yeah. them do it. Yeah. Create the legend, you know, and then it's easy to get money to make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> but your own life has some such dramatic, your own childhood has such dramatic things in it. I mean, uh, I, I just reading about it. I can't imagine, first of all, I don't think that anybody who hasn't lived through Europe during the war can have any idea what it was like. I'm sure I can't. And the things that have happened to you, you've been very close to death twice as a kid. Uh, I'm thinking of the one incident where you were on the hillside picking the berries. Could you tell that? Well, I was, uh, I was close to death many times. Yeah. But there's no point of lamenting uh, myself uh, uh, you know, about my childhood. Just think of any child in, 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 in India now, Pakistan or in Vietnam. Yeah. I mean, we just don't have contact with these people. And you're lucky to meet one that went through things like that. You see? You're lucky to? <laughs> To, 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 to get one who went through things like uh, these people who, whom mm -hmm. you will never meet. Yeah. You yeah. know, well, if, well, what did you want to know about it? <laughs> I, I, I wanted to hear the story that happened to you when you were on the hillside as a kid. And, you know, that was one of the like more, more innocent, yeah, I like this story. I mean, I was yeah. picking uh, berries. I was living in a country since I escaped from, from the ghetto. Uh, just before the liquidation. My mother was taken... This is Warsaw or in... No, it was Krakow. 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 Okay. It wasn't as terrible as in Warsaw. You see, in Warsaw, mm -hmm. people were virtually dying in the ghetto. The Krakow ghetto was liquidated before they started dying of starvation. So they were sent to the concentration camps. My mother was taken first, and about uh, uh, a month later, uh, I, uh, I escaped because we knew they were going to liquidate it. My father right. cut the wires. It was quite easy to get out of the ghetto. It was no problem. The problem was to survive outside of it. So he'd cut the yeah. wires about 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, or maybe early, I don't remember. It was very early. I, we could see Germans coming because they used the soldiers for liquidation and mm -hmm. sending people to the concentration camp. And that was the last time I saw him. And uh, first I stayed with some uh, family, some friends of my father's, and subsequently friends with this family friends and eventually with people I don't know and then I ended up in the country. It was my first contact with the country. I was then uh, um, seven and a half mm -hmm. and uh, I lived in the country for a few years with the Catholic family. Um, it was very backward uh, um, um, group of people but they were quite good to me. They were not like the people in Painted Bird which uh, you, mm -hmm. if you didn't read, I suggest you do, because it's a very similar childhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there were no Germans there. Once I was walking and picking uh, berries, and I saw some Germans, on the <coughs> German soldiers, on the cart, you know, horse cart. You saw just, them on the... On the cart, and yeah. I just ignored them. And then I heard uh, a whistle of the bullet. It was the first time I heard something. <laughs> And then I had the, 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 the uh, club of the explosion. And then, I, and then I looked in that direction and I saw that they were aiming at me. They were just shooting. It had nothing to do with me. They just, you know, they just let out the shot. That's all. Just for fun. I don't know why you picked that. Uh, and I don't know why Kenneth Hanna just picked that. I went in much more drastic situations. I was yeah. bombed and... Uh, uh, people tried to kill me, and I went through many things like that. I don't know, this is just an innocent thing. Which is, yeah. I mean, I don't know well, how many things I mean. like Somebody that happened to you. Maybe you walked, there was a, a flower pot which fell behind you, you didn't hear it because there was a bus passing at the same time, and you didn't no. hear the noise flash. Not even that. To my innocent life, that little story you told us is a dramatic incident. <laughs> to me, much just more dramatic incident when I was in the ghetto. Yeah. I saw... Um, uh, it was just before the liquidation, they were taking parts of people away. And I saw a group of old women being led somewhere by German soldiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of them were old, but not all of them. One was very old and could hardly walk, and she was sort of staggering behind. And this German officer was pushing them, I was on the other side of the street. He was pushing her and shouting at her in German. And suddenly he, he drew a gun and shot her in her back and this blood exploded. It was all so fast, you know, and this woman f 
fell down, I ran into a, a, a doorway and hid uh, myself under the stairs and yeah. stayed there for maybe an hour. That was, a, that was really shocking and terrible experience in my life. Not this one where they, sh they were shooting at me. I was running very yeah. fast afterwards, but here I saw something. You, you mm -hmm. see, I, I was for the first time in my life, I was there maybe seven or something like that, or seven, seven and a half. I don't remember exactly the period of it in the ghetto. Yeah. But it was the first time that something like that happened that um, scared me so much that I couldn't forget it for years afterward. Yeah. I see what you mean, the contrast between that and the other thing. It's much more yeah. frightening when you see something than who, when, you, when it happens to you. Who could you go to to explain that sort of thing to you? Who did you say, what, did you assume that's the way the world was, that people shot people constantly, tried to kill people all the well, time? I think that a, or did you know that you were going through a particularly bad part of the world? Well, you see, child accepts everything. And that's yeah. the, just the reality. You can br bring up a child in a white room and he will accept it as a reality, whatever you do to him. Yeah. Through, throughout the war, I ate boiled flour with some milk sometimes for three years. Mm. And I thought that was the normal food. I liked it. Sometimes I could have some uh, sugar or saccharin on it or anything. But there was something mm. like I, I wasn't particularly unhappy about this part of it. I know now that people kill and do wars because they like it. I mean, that's the, f that's the thing which we have to face. That's part of human nature. That's mm -hmm. evolutionary. We are built this way. And there's the other part of human beings, the civilized mind, which rebels against this thing. But mm -hmm. this is inherent. There would not be wars well, if people didn't want wars. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to have a war if people didn't want wars. People enjoy killing. People enjoy fighting. But, but what I wondered was, did you know that there was a world, did you know that there was somebody your age, me, growing up somewhere else in the world oh, uh, in a completely peaceful... Of course. Completely I remember, peaceful, uh, I tell you, how, I, I, I tell you another episode will explain it exactly, how I felt. Okay. About two years later, or three years later, when I was living in a country, I was picking this berry again, because that all I could do, pick berries or mushrooms or things like that, mm. and help with harvest, but there was very little harvest because they had only an acre and a half for the whole family. It was hardly anything to eat. Potatoes and, and flour that we, we would grind in this, you know, you know, hand mill, if you mm -hmm. want. I don't know how it's called, kind of uh, uh, stone, you know, anyway. For berries, a, a press or something? Not berries, for, 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 for grain. Oh, for grain, uh, a, uh, a mill, yeah, a little kind of small mill. small mill. Yeah. Anyway, I was picking these berries. And it was towards the end of the war. It was 1944, I think. Mm -hmm. Summer, very, very hot on the hill. Summer in Poland is very hot. Winter, very cold. It's like in Canada, yeah. sort of, or even New York. And I was uh, picking, I was in a, in a little wood, birches, birch wood. And all noise you could hear was this, you know, this summer noise of the insects. And suddenly I heard a, a different noise. Like, mm, I couldn't understand what it was. And then I thought maybe it's an airplane. And I looked up and I saw these hundreds of American planes just going east, you know? And then mm -hmm. there's this, a new noise came, you know? And I could see the explosions, the, the German artillery firing. This was one of the most beautiful moments of my life. When I sometimes hear this noise, you know, it was so, uh, it was so, it was bringing such a hope, you know, mm -hmm. such, um, uh, um, such expectations for something to come. And I was just hoping that no one of these planes will explode. And they did occasionally, you know, and then you could see the white, uh, a parachute, you know, going, and then I was yeah. hoping that we'll ho he will come over this way, you know, the man on the parachute. Yeah. That I'll be able to talk to him. It was moving experience. Yeah. It was beautiful. This noise is very important for me, and I used yeah. it in one film. As a matter of fact, I used it in Macbeth. Nobody will know it. That, uh, you know, what you'll know what me. moment it was. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, I, I always think, I was saying to you during the break, I always feel like somebody who's been through it, what could be a nightmarish childhood. Um, of the war and all must have a, feel a certain contempt for people who haven't been through it because they've had it so much easier, you know. Um, maybe you don't. No, maybe I don't have don't. any contempt. Oh, I have sometimes, I feel anger when they come up with some issues w which uh, seems to me ridiculous in view that they never 
went through any kind of hardship that could have uh, uh, made them uh, talk differently. Am I clear about that? No, too complicated? Well, I guess so. If you mean they talk about things that they can't possibly know anything about or no. they're they hold forth well, I mean, things there that are people who dismiss these things are not existent, etc. Yeah. But I, I, I want to uh, be clear that I'm quite sure that this experience to a child does very little, strangely enough. It's much mm. more important as far as your creative life is concerned. That's what I'm talking about. I don't mm. know, maybe it can mold your character, your personality. But for your creative life, the adolescence is much more important. And I can see that people who went through war who, uh, between 18 and 25, and the 18 and 30, I would say, any of this mm -hmm. age, they were tremendously marked. Any of my colleagues, a little bit older generation, they can't talk about anything else but the war in their films, in their le literature. But a child can absorb it maybe in some way better. Child absorb it than... as reality, you see. Yeah. It's not, yeah. He didn't know better before. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you pity yourself more when you're older, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I have no way of talking on subjects. I've never been through anything quite like it. Uh, I, I'm wondering, though, somebody like you, who you said you've faced death several times, you, your own death closely several times, does that give you a kind of uh, feeling about... Uh, I'm trying not to make some fatuous comment here, but, but uh, um, that, is there some sense that every day you've gotten since then is sort of uh, a bonus, you know, after you've been shot at, you had a guy I try to kill you in a... It took me very long time to come to this conclusion. Strangely enough, I came to this conclusion only two years ago, that every day is a bonus. I didn't have yeah. this before. I was very cheerful and very optimistic, and I still am. It mm -hmm. changed a little bit, my personality. But uh, I don't think, you see, that uh, this type of uh, experience gives you that. When I was 16, I was being murdered, literally, by a, th a thug, you know, who struck... Look, you see this? this uh, uh, Scar. I've read about this, yeah, scars. Yeah. Here, wow. <laughs> well, there are five, I didn't, for, for a moment, you see, when yeah. later on in the hospital, my father was lamenting and everybody mm. how stupid I am, etc., that I could have been killed, and everybody keeps saying that I just escaped. I couldn't mm. understand, I could not believe it. You never, be when you escape uh, closely, death, you don't believe that you did escape, because that's the way it is. Seems. I mean, you did, you were not killed, so yeah. uh, you were not dead. Yeah. Understand? As I understand that story, a, a, a guy was going to sell you a bicycle. Is that the That's story? Right. And he said to meet you in a certain place, and then he took you down underground, was it? Yeah, I well, pictured I was, it in a kind I of I was 16, and I was racing bicycles. You know, it's yeah. a very popular sport, sport in Europe. And that was my future. I really wanted to be a racing champion. And it was very difficult to get uh, racing gear. And he offered to sell me a bicycle uh, for a very cheap price. That, from his description, looked like a marvelous racing bicycle. And uh, we had this appointment in the, in the, in the old German bunker. Mm -hmm. And we walked down. There. I had money in my pocket. He was, um, he was uh, uh, holding a, pa a torch made out of a newspaper. It was raining outside. My yeah. friend was waiting on the other side. It was in the park. My friend was waiting on the other side of kind of double carriageway where the street was uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the doorway. And uh, as we walked there, he... I don't remember how it exactly happened. He was, we're talking about the muck on the floor, on the, about the dirt uh, and excrements and how people are terrible, you know, etc. That was, the, were his last comments. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, looking for this bicycle. I could see hardly the end of this long bunker. And he said it was around the corner. I see, but they, there is no corner then. Then he struck me. I was so, it was so unexpected for me that for this, in this brief moment, before I lost my consciousness, and I lost it for only a short time, because I know, mm. the, the, the reason I know I lost it was that I felt only one blow, and I had five, I have five scars. For this, mm. this short moment, I thought there was, I touched a cable, you know, live cable, and I was, uh, um, I was electrocuted. It felt like a shock. More felt, than yeah, more. then I thought, no, somebody hit me. And I thought, there must be somebody hidden there. I could not believe that he actually, this guy who, whom I met a uh, couple of weeks ago, and I sort of uh, walked around with him a little bit, you know, and uh, treated him as a friend. He was a very young man. Mm -hmm. And only when I saw him above me asking, where is the money, I understood it was him. And he took my money, yeah. also my watch, and ran away. I got out through a, little, through a window, you know, those escape windows they have in the ceiling, a jump. Pull myself yeah. up, and there was my friend. The guy had left me. you for dead then. 
I mean, he assumed, as far as he knew, he... No, 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 no. He did not. It was after he hit me. He just... He, yeah. did, he didn't have enough time. The head, head, my head happens to be very hard. Yeah. And probably uh, uh, the, it was either the moment when I became an idiot or a genius, but something mm. had happened since that my career went in straight line up to a Dick Cavett show. <laughs> so, you may even go higher, who knows? You never know, indeed. But the guy, didn't the man turn out to be a murderer that they had yeah, wanted they for... Hit, uh, they, they, they caught him. Yeah. You see, because my friend ran after, I, he came, he says, he said that something that if I said, he would, you would immediately got out of the show. But, mm. you know, it ended up, he arranged you pretty well. Well, that's it's a euphemism. And he used some, said about his, something about his mother, etc. And I said, <laughs> run after him. And the friend <clears throat> did run after him. Uh, and... There was a, a truck, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, um, rubbish, the garbage truck garbage which truck. was passing. And they grabbed him, pulled him in. Well, it's, it's too boring to go through it, not enough yeah. time. Anyway, they got him, and he happened to be a murderer. He killed three people before, you see. Yeah. You, ought to use, you never use those incidents, actual incidents in a film, though. Have you, uh, have you ever made a film based on Actually, your own? Actually, the very first film life? I did when I was in the film school, which was never finished because the lab... Uh, screwed up the negative, you know. It was about this incident. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there was when you were in Polish film, film school, That's in the right. state film school? That's right. Yeah.